Okay, thank you. We're back. The um, you were really talking about collective consciousness, like the examples of the tiger and the animals yeah. in second D, and then you went into strands. Right. So the third density where we are now is the first level of consciousness, the first density of consciousness where we get to be an individual spirit. We will preserve our individual spirit for quite some time. Not in the same form, but our individuality begins uh, in third density and continues from third density. The um, um, talking about the, the structure underneath within the octaves is formed all of the universes. And each universe is a logos or a racial mind. It is unique in the general parameters that it offers for creation of everything within that universe. Each universe, and this is true throughout the rest of the structure of what we perceive, what we perceive to be the physical creation, the universe that is, is created here will have similar characteristics to the one that is created by proximity here. Even though there's no physicality to it, it is when you're creating things, and it's just like if you think of uh, uh, claymation photography that they use, Tim Burton uses a lot to make movies with. And every time, each scene has one minor change. You'll move one character's arm in order to slowly, incrementally get it over to the position that he needs. And each movement requires a photograph. Well, each universe is like claymation photography. So we did this one, so let's change this, and then this will be the next universe. And then we'll change this, and this will be the next universe. So this is the sequence of universe creation is the one next to the one before is going to be very similar with minor changes. Because each minor change changes all of creation. Okay. Change one little part, change, changes the whole, because all is one. That same concept is true with, with galaxies. And I'll mention this at this point, too. These, if our, if our, uh, if our octave has these nine archetypes in it, if you're in this archetype, or if you're in, the, in this octave over here, and your octave does not have um, movement, if your octave doesn't have movement, you won't know what the heck's going on in our octave. Are we all in the same octave? Yes. In this room? Yes. Right. All, all, our universe and every universe that's close to us is in the same octave. Okay, within our universe, all of the galaxies that we can see, all these little orbital shaped things buzzing around within our universe, each one is different but the ones closest to the next one are going to be very similar. Minor changes, again, claymation photography, just one little change gets a whole new galaxy. Within the galaxy, solar systems. Well, let me, let me interject this here. Between the galaxy level and the solar system level, Um, is not something that we see, but is a very distinct characteristic that exists. And this is, for lack of, of another word, there's, I haven't been really given a word for this, but it's a council level. Each one of these nine archetypes has a consciousness that participates in a council. 
and there is an, a multitude of councils scattered throughout the universe and counted, scattered throughout the galaxies. And you, some of you, you may have heard the Council of Nine as being a regulatory agency or body or whatever. That is, are the nine archetypes that have a representative that sit on the council. And this is a geographic territory that is usually within a galaxy. So the Milky Way galaxy will have a multitude of councils. There will be a, there will be a series of councils. In other words, the octave will have the big council with nine representatives on it. As we move into universes, the universes will have a nine council that also participate in the, the big council for the octave. This is non-physical council? They, they have no their consciousness. They're all six density. So they may be physical or not physical. We actually have the location for our council is in the rings of Saturn, actually on one of the moons. But there is um, a geographic territory that emerges that regulates or not regulates, it mon yeah it does, it monitors the experiences that take place within its, from our perspective, geographic area. In other words, the, the guys that sit on our council are underneath the Galaxy Council, underneath the Universe Council, underneath the Octave Council, and they're creating unique experiences. They create solar systems. Our solar system participates in the Council of Nine that um, sits in the rings of Saturn, um, and we have a multitude of um, solar systems that are, relatively speaking, our sister solar systems that we share experiences with. Each solar system has its own archetypical mind. Our sun is the center of our solar system. It has a unique archetypical mind. And that uh, every being that is incarnate in our solar system, which is far more than just us, it is not just the earth, uh, is under the same archetypical mind. And if, you, if you're familiar with the way colleges work, if you enter college um, as a freshman and they have a particular um, class schedule or list of classes required and required curriculum, required curriculum, you enter and you have to graduate within seven years or you have to requalify under the new criteria. If you're in our solar system, you have to play according to our archetypical mind. We, as beings going through evolution, have the opportunity, for the most part, we will stay within the same archetypical mind which doesn't mean you have to stay on Earth. You could be on another planet in our same level of consciousness. But you would be under the same archetypical mind design. If you want to go visit another archetypical mind in another solar system that falls within our council creation guidelines, then you can do that, but you have to play according to the rules of that archetypical mind. Which means it will be based upon the same nine archetypes but it can be a completely different design. Just to clarify, there's um, an infinite number of councils in the Milky Way, or no? Just I mean, those 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 become finite. I mean, you got nine stars, and each grouping of nine stars <laughs> creates a geographic council area. What do you mean each grouping? Each star or each geographical location each within the star? Nine stars, each nine stars. Oh, okay. For example, and I, I don't offhand recall, um, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, our sun is the only um, solo, uh, we, we just perceive it as the only solo star. But Alpha Centauri, um, Cephas, 
Um, Cirrus. Orion. Oh no. Um, <laughs> that, 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 totally different thing. Um, whatever. But, but there, there are two stars in, in the Cirrus pattern. There's a binary star system in Alpha Centauri. There's a binary system in, in Cephas and um, Zeta, Zeta Reticula. Um, is the other one. But each of those has two, two stars in their system and then our sun, which makes nine stars, each one is a home to one of the archetypes. That creates our, that's our geographic council area. And we can participate in any of the other solar systems as third density beings just to diversify our experience. They each have probably a similar archetypical mind that we are under, but not the same archetypical mind. How do we do that as third density beings? Huh? How do we do that as third density beings? Well, obviously our higher self, you know, we sit down and chat with our higher self and say, I'd like to go play over there for a while, and I say, okay, I think it'd be good for you, so next time you go incarnate in Sirius B, in a Sirius B solar system. Okay. You said the the um, the representatives on the council are sixty. Yes. Right. Is this it the, one. Is it, yes. Yeah. Is it the council that is monitoring the balance between between service to self and service to others, or is it seventy? No, it's all sixty. All sixty. All sixty. With seventy is council if they need it. I mean, but the prime, the day to day activity is sixty. So it's the council that's monitoring the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's daily, you know, all of our experiences, all of that is created by the six density uh, beings who are all under the auspices of the council. So 60 is like the admin for the managers. They're, and they're the creators and managers. They, they, they implement creation. Okay, gotcha. So it's not just monitoring. No, no it's creation and monitoring. Of it. In other words, they got to watch their own creation. So if they didn't do a good job, they said, whoops. You know, well, and they can also stop and start. <laughs> they can also stop and start the experience. And it's adjusted all the time. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting. I went to straight in church all my life, you know, from a child. And they taught us that God managed all this by himself. He made, that he had He's no help. He's a helpers. busy sucker. I'll I said, you. God, he is, so, he is bad. He's bad <laughs> and busy, for real, really. Yeah, but understand, it's, it is. It is, because it's the law, law of one, and it's still know, one. It's, all of this is just perception. Yeah. That's like great management perception. <laughs> yeah, he has a really, God really good computer. He has a really good computer, right? Yeah. Because, because we have to break it down to our level of thinking in order to conceptualize these different parts of the one whole. Yes, but this is the way it's broken down, and understand that the reason that it's broken down this way is that concept of slicing the tissue sample thinner and thinner. Yeah. Okay? Because this is infinity that we're talking about, and we, we cannot understand infinity. I, you know, I, it's not that I can't understand it. It's, it, it's beyond our design to understand infinity, and that's intentional. Because they don't want us worrying about infinity at this point. They want us worrying about, not worrying about, but exploring the territory that we've been assigned. And if we're off, you know, trying to figure out infinity in canon, you know, we get progress reports that we're understanding infinity and we overlook our purpose in being here, which is exploring us, then we're not fulfilling our purpose. If we are too ethereal in nature and our feet are not on the ground, there's no way in the world we can create as well. and do anything. Yeah. Say that again. I said if we were so, if we we're too ethereal in nature, floating off the ground, we, we're not grounded, then there's no way that we can create here, and that's what we're here for. Okay. So our solar system is our playground, and we will stay. This, our solar system contains, obviously, first and second density consciousness. It also contains third density consciousness, which is us, and we're the only third density experience right now. There was another one that has finished. Okay? 
when we, if we, well, if we finish this one and don't graduate to fourth density, then we will relocate to this other planet that's already in our solar system. When did that one finish? Is that that 785 year, thousand years, or whatever you talked about before? Well, our experience, a third density experience, is approximately 75,000 years. So, so that one you're talking about is one that had to been completed 75,000 years ago. No, they just finished relative to our calendar fairly recently. Was that 2013, 2012 there? No, it, no, but it, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly when it finished, but it was, it's within the last few years. It could have been that one, but they're not on the same calendar we're on. So, yeah, but if we're staying, if we're graduating, then we will stay on Earth as a fourth density planet not as a third density planet. It will be completely different from what we know it as now. But there's, um, th there's a, um, a fourth density planet, a fifth density planet that are both negative, and there's a third, it was a third, it's just empty right now, a fourth and a fifth density planet that are positive in polarity, and Earth will become a fourth density positive polarity. Do you mean planet. that, do you mean that uh, geographically it will change? Um, mm -hmm. As well, Earth. Mm -hmm. My understanding is, and uh, my understanding is that Earth will be transformed organically, uh, which is a unique experiment, in that the third density will simply fade out and die of natural causes, and when the last third density being died, uh, being dies, Passes out. then fourth density will appear. And part of the transition between now and then, and the beginning parts of that, will be the rest restoration of the Earth. So yes, it will geographically, uh, uh, or uh, yeah, geographically be different, but we're going to do it. We will do it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. The fourth, new fourth density will do it. The end of third density and fourth mm -hmm. density. Mm -hmm. With all the like space probes we have now and everything, would would the council allow us to physically find them? I mean, they're not there. I mean, they're, they're not physical. They're not physical. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Just, no. I mean, they're there now. I mean, we we can <laughs> see them said, with our you telescopes. Said, you said some of them might be. Where I'll go. They can be physical or not physical, yeah. but not for us to see. Hmm. I mean, there are other planets that are well within our viewing capabilities telescopically, mm -hmm. and that we have visited that are occupied. And fully functioning, but their consciousness level is beyond us, so they're not visible to us. They're they're right here, right now. Which this is this is the perception, the distortion that there's, and that's what the archetypical mind does is create these things that we perceive like physicality in space and movement. They're right here. There's no. Uh, there's no difference. I mean, our, I don't know how to describe it other than physical terms. They're right here with us. We just can't perceive them because our consciousness level is low, relatively speaking. Dean, when so, you were talking about the nine stars, are we talking about the planets? We're not talking about stars that sparkle up in the sky. We're talking about our planets in our solar system? No, the, so no, no, the nine stars are the not our stars. Star, like the okay. sun. Our sun is the home for wisdom. Wisdom lives in our star. Okay. You're talking about the colors and everything, and I had a girl that took my Renford affirmations, and she took pictures from the Hubble space pictures of the galaxies, and, and put a music background and put the affirmations up there. It shows all these galaxies, and they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Just like nothing you've seen on Earth. You, anybody can go look at these. You just got them up there on the YouTube. She did them telescopically. No, she got it from she got them from the hub. I guess from Hubble, right? The 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 the, 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 the space telescope. Space telescope. Oh, space telescope. But the colors and everything is just, and each one of those galaxies has its own shape. And it's just beautiful in its own colors. What causes the colors, though, is the same thing that causes our chakras color. 
It's the balance of consciousness within, within that, that area. Mm -hmm. that so area. the ones that are green, it's like the love. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, the well, green I did an advertisement here. You can go to youtube.com and then type in the Renford Broadcast Network and they have that and you can go find that uh, those pictures I'm talking okay. about. How, how are you spelling Ren? Renford, my middle name, R-E-N-F-O-R-D. R-E-N-F-O-R-D. And those pictures are, and it, and it just keeps playing the music and you can just see all those different galaxies. It's just really mind-boggling colors. Nice. Sorry. It's okay. Right. It's all right. <laughs> Okay, now we're down to solar systems, which, for, this, for the sake of understanding in correlation to an um, archetypical mind, each solar system will have a separate archetypical mind. An archetypical mind is designed for a solar system. And just like the way the rest of the universe works, our solar system... The, the archetypical mind for our solar system will be very similar to the one next to us, wherever that is. Slightly different, again, claymation, just, you know, a minor move in order to experience changes, differences. So that there is no, there is no reason for a duplication of an experience, and that's what is um, uh, striven mightily to not have occur. The purpose of creation is so that the creator might experience itself by having experiences. The creator has a really, really good awareness system and doesn't need to do the same experience twice. But by that token, every experience that takes place, for example, on earth, Every experience that takes place on earth, every one of us will experience before we get out of evolution. Every experience that you have had in your lifetime or multiple lifetimes will be experienced by everybody else. Before you get to the eighth. Before you get to the eighth. Is that like part of the collective with the animals where we all where we all share? No, individually. <coughs> individually. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. And individually. In Would the solar system be considered rarer because you've got the Milky Way here and, and you've got they can't find other planets, so so they They're just not looking. In in our galaxy, okay? In our galaxy, which is um, I forgot how many stars. There are approximately 67 million planets of the same level of consciousness. No, 67 million planets that are occupied with either third, fourth, or fifth density. And of that 67 million, 26% of them are our level of consciousness. All of them don't have the same kind of experiences that we are. 26% of 67 million. Just in our galaxy, and there's an infinite number of galaxies, and an infinite number of universes, and an infinite number of octaves. And we're set here. And we think we're the only ones. Put, put here to think that we're the only ones, to, I guess, to, so we, as part of this process. What the archetypical mind does, mm -hmm. which we will, part of what we'll get into. You what? said um, are occupied with the third, fourth, fifth density? Uh-huh. When you say that we experience what everybody else will experience, do you mean the complete range of emotion? No, I mean every experience. I mean like <laughs> Don, like Don oh, yeah. Donna, like me going through and now I have mm -hmm. two girls and... How? If well, we only have so many incarnations, yeah, then how is really? that possible? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. We, do that, we do that with fifth density consciousness. You will experience everything all at one time. Oh, I see what all you're saying. Okay. Okay, because okay. we're grouping oh, together, and then we're more, we're not aware just of ourselves, but of okay. the group. Well, you're, you are aware of just yourself, but yourself is it's significantly greater right. than what you perceive yourself well, to be. So your here. awareness is growing, then. Yeah. 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 With greater consciousness, becomes greater or comes greater awareness. 
That's really, that's, that's really. I'm going to say, God bless y'all. <laughs> you got to experience some of my stuff. <laughs> it's been a journey. <laughs> the highs and the lows. It's been a journey, a roller coaster ride. Well, they talk about these guys who, who uh, pick up on what everybody's thinking. Mm -hmm. And and they, they talk about it, and, it, and they get into a group. It's just a yeah, that's what I start. Just a cacophony of knowledge, of, of, of yeah. knowledge and everything. And yeah. uh, so if you, in fifth density, you must be capable of handling I'm just handling. an enormous amount of it, experience and information coming in. Yeah. Wow, that's got to be deep. Yeah. The dramatic, the dramatic, first dramatic change is about to occur for the people that are graduating into fourth density. And right now, we are um, at the top of the bottom of our consciousness range. In other words, we're nearing the end of third density. And so, relative to where we were, we are significantly higher. But when we graduate from third density to fourth density, there are actually three more of us, and those four will merge into one to form one fourth density being. <coughs> So we have dramatically more capabilities and awareness and all of that in fourth density. Okay, but what about all the other people that are running around in absolute chaos that are... Then they will remain in chaos. They will not graduate. They'll go to this other planet and do third density some more. Okay. This is the fifth time that most of us have tried to graduate from third density. This, this, we're finishing up now. This is the fifth try. I'm graduating this time. <laughs> but there, but there will be a six and a seventh <laughs> and an eighth. <laughs> the purpose is to create experience. Yeah. So there's no, we'll there's no job. reason to have angst over that. <laughs> yeah, other than, really. and that's what the Buddha taught. That's what the wheel of samsara is. As long as you remain asleep, then you'll stay in the wheel of samsara. You'll keep reincarnating and learning the lessons of third density until you awaken and say, "I'm really tired of this. I want out of here." And so you begin to do the work to graduate. And he stresses that the first law is that everything changes. And the second is that all of our problems come from resistance to that change. So if you can get that, if you can get that concept in mind, you're on your way. Well, we seek stasis. By, by we, we don't want things to change. We want to seek stasis. And as we do that, we create pain and suffering. And that changing has to do with the movement. Yeah, I was, yeah, the change. Yeah, that that we'll get into real good illustrations of that. The actual, the the original source of is the the perception of separation. Mm -hmm. But the movement is an, is a vital part. Not only are we made stupid with no, you know, no information or no nothing, where we we enter into chaos. Which is movement. Which is movement. Which is interesting because then you need the. The emotion for emotion. So if you resist the emotion, that's exactly what he's saying. What he's saying. Mm -hmm. You said this is our fifth, the fifth time, but really we're only going to have a sixth time because um, for Ra anyway. Yeah, there's just more than I was going to get into. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure I'm jumping ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. <coughs> that's true. We go in. I mean, you know, because we just get rolled up and go home with the, the group anyway. <laughs> okay. Y'all have any questions? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. We'll let it marinate. Well, yeah, your yeah, questions so. are, are, are good. They help me to understand what I need to include in the book. And then there are a lot of folks that watch this on YouTube. So, <laughs> so we're not showing our ignorance when we ask your question. We're just helping you. That's, that's exactly it. You were teaching me. Well, you were teaching you know, me. Just like I watch a video, the YouTube videos, I have to watch them at least twice, two or three times. I so too. I'm having to, this is the first time of this, so I've got to watch this again. Okay, well, we're going to put this on YouTube. Yeah, I've got to, I need to rerun to make sure I got it. And How are you labeling this archetype lecture series? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't given her a specific name yet, but I'll let you know when I get it posted and mm -hmm. translated. Okay. Well, I do have one. Uh, I have one question about it. Is you said that the stars are the housing places for the five inherent characteristics? Well, all nine. All nine. All, all nine. nine. They're the housing for the councils. 
Yeah, that's right. So and for every archetype, there's a, the, so Lucifer has its house, and love has its house. Okay, so for all nine, and the stars are there. But then you said that each star has its council, right? Each group of nine. Each group of nine stars has oh, a council. Oh, 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 right, right. Okay, that's and it. It's interesting yeah, that there's nine, because yeah, nine is the number of completion of a cycle. In our octave. And, and it's the only one that you can add any number to, and it will come back, break back down to the number that you add the nine to. But that wouldn't necessarily be the case in another... But in this octave, this is, this, only, this, this is the only one we're concerned with. Right. There are there are octaves that have all 32 um, archetypes, which I, I just I just cannot even begin to imagine. And, and you know, I've tried to imagine what another archetype. I you know, I can imagine what we have, mm -hmm. but just trying to imagine what another archetype would be, <laughs> and I haven't a clue. And my higher self, or actually. Uh, in the raw material, they, they say we visited other experiences talking about other octaves that have that other ingredient, and to them, to six density, they say it's mind boggling. So, if you but if you want to know about those other 32, you simply go to your higher self in six in, in six density and have them show you. Yeah, she knows how thick, <laughs> how thick I am and what difficulty we've had doing this, and so I don't think she's going to spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> explain, explain uh, Lucifer is on consciousness. I mean, I kind of understand, but I want to hear you explain that. In okay. If I may ask you to hold that, because one of the archetype, one of the archetypes of the archetypical mind. These are just the resources that they use to design the archetypical mind. Okay. And one of the archetypes of the ar archetypical mind is unconsciousness. It is Lucifer. And I think uh, to try to explain it now would um, it, it'd be very difficult. Okay, and if you can hold that question until we get to that archetype, and then it will be, I, and, I think, and, much and easier Brittany, to understand. And Brittany was yeah. describing that unconscious level of all those people <laughs> running around out there a while ago. We are all unconscious. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to associate it with the devil. Everything just unconscious. Or just, that's just beetle. what they call it. Yeah. Or how we yeah. understand it. <laughs> just confusion. It's running oh. around in chaos. And it, what, it, what is confusing is trying to correlate what, uh, what culturally we have taught ourselves things to mean. Yes. yes. As opposed to the way the design. Okay. But you see it in the news, you see it everywhere. It's all fear-based. Mm -hmm. And that fear is fed by the ignorance. And so you see that consciously being fed out over the airwaves. We're living with it. I mean, wow. you literally, it's palpable. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We good? Yeah. I thank y'all. Thank, thank you. We'll be here uh, the second Sunday of February. Yeah. Yep. And we'll start. Uh, should be. So you're gonna do. You're gonna do them on the second and.